Welcome back, everyone, to our prayer journey with Mike Toth as we continue stepping through the book of Mark one verse at a time. Today, we're going to be covering chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. You know, there was a movie once, I can't remember the name, it was about a baseball movie, and uh, where they cleared the field and they said, if you build it, they will come. And I'm here to say today that if you follow Mark and follow Jesus, they will come. You know, we give up too easy as Christians giving out the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'll tell you, if you follow Jesus, they will come. And you'll have opportunity to give witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and of eternal life. You want to turn this country around? Pray and go out and follow Jesus to the best of our ability. And we're going to see a story here where people are following Jesus. So let me start here in uh, chapter 5, verse 21. And I'm going to read the first four or five verses. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship into the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was close to the sea, and nigh to the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name, and he saw him, he fell at his feet. I want you to stop and think here for a second. How did this guy know he's coming? Let's think about that. And he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she may live. And Jesus went on to him, and much people followed him, and uh, he was crowded. Okay, so here's the thing. The ruler of the synagogue is a man of God, and perhaps a really good man of God, really seeking God. His daughter is sick. It can bring you to a point of real prayer. And he prays, probably, I'm guessing, but I'm sure he did. And then all of a sudden, Jesus is coming down the sea, and the people see him and start running. And Jarius somehow gets word that this ship is coming and Jesus is on it. And he comes down before him and he bows before him and he says to him, Hey, Jesus, my daughter is sick, ready to die. That is the picture we get when we go through this story here. What happened? You know, it's, it's a real life story. Put yourself again in this man's place. And he's going out on the limb now as a Pharisee, you're a ruler of a synagogue, and he's putting his name on the line and trusting Jesus. And perhaps he would not have done that if his daughter did not get sick. So sometimes when bad things happen, they happen for a good reason. And we don't know what that reason is. So let's go on in uh, verse 25. And a certain woman, now another person, right, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus came, the press behind and touched his garment. So she goes and follows this crowd and she somehow wiggles her way through and touches Jesus' garment. You see how the people come to Jesus? You know, when he heals us as Christians, when we can live a godly life, our testimony goes forth even more than what we say. I remember reading something, witness every day and sometimes even talk. And some people criticize that, but that is true. It's more important to witness and to talk. You can't go either way without it. If you're not a witness and you're talking, you're a hypocrite and you're causing more difficulty. But you see, everybody's driving to Jesus. So what are we to do? Follow Jesus and let the people come. Because God is directing people to come in both these cases. So verse 28. For she said, if I may touch it, his clothes, I shall be made whole. This is her thought in her mind. That if I touch Jesus, I could be made whole. Verse 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt her body that she was healed of the plague. And you can say, well, how could she know she was healed that quick? I'll tell you how you can know. You know, I went to uh, a doctor, and I had to get something for my shoulder because it was hurting. 
and actually was coming from my neck, they taped me up a little bit. And when they taped me up, when I went out, I realized I was getting pains in other areas that were no longer there. Because, you know, now that my arms, shoulders still hurt a little, but the muscles around it didn't hurt. I knew that that tape was fixing the muscles that were getting damaged from the muscle that was hurt. So she could tell instantly from pains that had gone away that she was made whole. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touch my clothes? Now, this could come across as like, hey, who touched my clothes? I don't think that was the case. Virtue went out of him. Why? He cleansed the sinner. You know, it's a joy to Jesus. Who touched me? The virtue went out and healed this person. When I got saved, virtue came into me and healed me. Let's go on in verse 31. And the disciples said unto him, Seest the multitude thronging thee? Seest thou who touched me? And he looked around and see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling and knowing what she had done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. She confessed to Jesus. Sinner, if you're not saved... We're all sinners, but we're forgiven if you're a Christian. If you're not saved, fall down before him and tell him, hey, I got this issue. I have a sin issue. Save me. And Jesus will. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. Be whole of thy plague. And Jesus gives the assurance that she is healed and she went away. What happened to Jarius? Let's see. While she had spake, they came a ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, The daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any further? You notice here the tone? The tone of Jarius was, Well, you didn't come rushing for my daughter. If you would have came rushing for my daughter, she would have been healed. The tone was, Tell the master not to come. You know, sometimes we get things placed upon us. I have seen more death these last few years as I get older than I want to see in a whole lifetime. Yet I know there are other people that I love that are on near death. It's a hard thing to accept. But that does not change Jesus Christ being my master. And it doesn't change the fact that I know one day I will see them. You see, a funeral to me is a celebration if they know Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm on this YouTube telling people about Jesus Christ. So let's go on. As soon as Jesus heard the word was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Now, he probably said this to the guy who came and told him because in a sense, that's how it worked. The messenger was really part of the rule of the synagogue. He carried the synagogue man's word. And so he probably told him that. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John and the brother of James. And I'm not sure why there is reasons given some, by some commentators. I am not sure for the reason. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the turmoil, and they wept and wailed greatly. They're in pain because they have a loss of life. They're weeping, weeping and crying. And he came, and when he's come in, he said unto them, Why make ye ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them out, he taketh the father and mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered wherewith the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talita kumi, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say to thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose, and she was of age of twelve years, and was astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that had no man should know it, 
and commanded something should be given her to eat. You know, before this, I bet you the man complained about how much he ate in the house. I used to be on a wrestling team. I would come home right after wrestling practice and I would down a half a gallon of milk, one shot. And I don't think he mattered anymore because his daughter was alive. And not only alive then, forevermore. For when you come to Jesus Christ, you're forever saved. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease. Thank <laughs> you.